everyone, Kendall here with Lousy Llama Creations. Today, this is going to be a crochet tutorial for a beginner frog. The supplies you're going to need is bright green yarn, white, a small amount of black for the smile, 10 millimeter safety eyes, a 5 millimeter crochet hook, stuffing, stitch markers, scissors, and a tapestry needle. If you're following for one of my crochet kits, all you need is a pair of scissors. If you add it on a hook, if you did not add on a hook, you need a five millimeter crochet hook. This has been one of the most highly requested characters, animals that I make, and so I'm super excited to finally bring it to you guys today. Jump in and start making our frog. To start off our frog, we're gonna start with a circle doing something called a magic ring. And I'm gonna start by saying, sometimes magic rings can be tricky. It's okay to take a moment, try again later, try to find a different video if this one doesn't work for you but I'm gonna show you my method and what works really well for me. I'm gonna start with the tail, which is at the end of the yarn, and then I have my skein over here. I'm gonna place the tail in my hand and wrap around to form an X, and then hold in the middle. So again, I have my tail, wrap around the hand, make an X, and hold. With my hook, I'm going to go under this arm of the X and on top of this one. So I'm going under, then over, and I'm going to pull this through the loop. So I'm going to pull it through. Twisting up. I'm going to hold it and take it off my hand. This is the yarn attached to my skein, so I'm going to pull that tight and then do something called a chain one, which was when we place the yarn on top of our hook and pull through. And this is a magic circle. But I'm gonna show it again. We have our tail, wrap around to make an X and hold. And then gonna go underneath over and pull through, twisting up. I'm gonna pinch and take it off my hand and then tighten it. And then do one chain. If you're struggling to pull the yarn through, don't forget to twist your hook down and then pull through. And we have our little magic ring. We're then going to place six single crochets on the ring. So you're going to insert your hook through the middle of your circle. I have two strands over here. Here's my tail. I'm going to put my stitches on the two tails. A single crochet is, the, is one of the smaller stitches that we can do. It's nice and tight. It's a very easy stitch, so it's a great way to start, especially with amigurumi, these little stuffed animals. So now that I have my hook under, the first one's a little awkward, you're gonna see it sliding. I just am holding it with a lot of fingers to make sure it stays. Tightening a little bit, I'm gonna place my yarn on top of the hook, pull it through, so that you have two loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through both of the loops. And that's one single crochet. So I'm going through the middle, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both for my second. This is three. Four. Five. And six. But it's not a circle, and that's okay. 
we're gonna take our tail and we're gonna pull. So then you get an actual little circle. I'm gonna use my stitch marker, which is that thing that looks like a little safety pin. And I'm gonna put it in the last stitch I made. So each stitch is this little V or little oval. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm gonna place my marker here so I know the end of my round. For round two, we're gonna do six increases. And an increase is just two single crochets in the same spot. So we're gonna be working in these stitches from round one. So I'm gonna push my hook through that very first single crochet I made. The first one's always a little tight, so don't worry. I wanna make sure I'm going under both of the little Vs. Then we're gonna make a single crochet, which is our yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both. That's one single crochet. To make an increase, we need to make a second. And we're gonna make a second in the exact same spot, the same first stitch from round one. So I'm gonna stick my hook right next to him and make another single crochet. At the end of round one, we had six stitches. At the end of row two, we'll have 12 because you're putting two in each one. Moving around into the next stitch, we'll place one single crochet and then a second. And then into the next one. One and two. Keep on going around. Now we're right on that last stitch that has our stitch marker in it. I'm gonna take out my marker, set it aside, and do our increase in two single crochets. One. And then two. That's the end of round two. So we wanna put our marker back in just so we know where the end is. And again, I'm putting in the very last stitch that I made for the round. And that's round two. For round three, we're going to do one single crochet and then in the next stitch, an increase. So it's like a little sequence of three. One and then two. One and then two. And we'll do that for the round. So in the first stitch, we'll place one single crochet. And in the next stitch, we'll do that increase. One and then two. In my head, I like to call them doubles. So I go one, double, one, double. It just kind of helps me keep track. So in the next stitch, we'll do one. And then the next stitch, a double or an increase. And then a one. And then an increase. You're gonna find, as you learn crochet, it has a lot of repetitive sequences, especially for things like making a circle because you want it to be even all the way around and is a nice smooth, non-bumpy circle. 
So a lot of times they have patterns. Nice repetitive ones. One. Increase. We get some visits from my cat Peanut too, who likes to help with video tutorials. My last one. So one. Taking out the marker. And then doing an increase. <laughs> Hi Peanut. Let me show this last round. And then I'm going to put my marker back in. So that was round one with our six. This has 12. And then the last round has 18. For the next round, you're going to do one, one increase. So one. In the next stitch, another one. And then an increase. This is a little series of four, a little sequence. One, one, double. And you're gonna go and do this for the whole round. Now, if this was one increase, one single crochet, and then the next round was two single crochet, and then an increase, I bet you can guess what the third round is, which is gonna be three single crochets, and then an increase. So one, 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 increase. You're gonna repeat this sequence for the whole round. For our frog following this pattern, that's as big as it's gonna get, because we're gonna to switch to something else after. But if you're wondering, how do I make a, the biggest frog ever? You would just keep on going. You would do four, and then an increase, five, then an increase, six, increase, and as big as you want it. For this pattern, we're just gonna do three single crochets and then an increase. So let me finish the round and then I'll show you how we're gonna make it actually look like a body. Just finished our last round of increases. I have my stitch marker, but to make it a little easier on ourselves, instead of putting it through the stitch, like this, like we've been doing, I'm gonna put it on, if it will focus, I'm gonna, mm, doesn't want to. I'm going to be putting it on the side of the stitch. So I'm going to take this out for a second. And it doesn't matter quite where, but in the last stitch you made, I'm just going to put it right on the side. And as you can see, I just pulled out my last stitch. That's okay. I'm going to do my last increase. And then put my marker in right on the side. <laughs> for the next 10 rounds, you're gonna be placing one single crochet in every single stitch. So no increases. You're just gonna keep on going around and around and around 10 times. The reason we move this to the side is that when you finish one round, you don't have to keep on moving your stitch marker. We're just gonna leave it there and go around for 10 rounds. So again, one stitch, one, 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 all the way around. I'll show you what it looks like when I finish this round and we start adding more. So I'm right at the end of the round. Instead of moving my marker, I'm just gonna keep on going. And then when I'm counting, I know I'm gonna go one, because that's the end. I like to count from the end, so it just makes more sense. End of round one, and then we'll keep on going till the end of round 10. So keep on going, it's gonna get nice and tall. And you're gonna to start to see it actually form a shape. I just finished my rounds. Um, as you can tell, the sunshine's coming in. It's November, so we just hit daylight savings or off of daylight savings, wherever that works. So I'm slowly being pushed off my table, trying to not get us in direct sunlight. So just bear with me. When I finish my 10 rounds, you can count them right at the end. So remember, you don't count the one with the stitch marker, because that was the one before. But one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yay! I'm gonna take out my marker. We'll move it up to the last round. So when we were getting bigger, we did three single crochets and then an increase. So we're now gonna to need to do three single crochets and then a decrease. And if our increase is two single crochets, a decrease is combining two stitches into one. So we're just gonna basically do the opposite thing. Let's do our three single crochets. One, two, three. And now our decrease. To do a decrease, you're gonna 
insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, just like the start of a normal single crochet, but instead of finishing it, we're going to insert our hook into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through. So you have three loops on your stitch, on your hook, excuse me. Yarn over and pull through all three. Thanks, Peanut. She's watching my yarn for me. So one, two, three, decrease. Let's show that again. One, two, three. Then our decrease. So insert, yarn over, pull through. Insert into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through. So you have three. Yarn over, pull through all three. So go ahead and for the rounds, do three single crochets and then decrease. And guess the next round. It's gonna be two single crochets and then a decrease. Decreases um, can sometimes leave a little bit of gap, so make sure you're pulling nice and tight. If this is your first piece, you're gonna learn tension as it comes. It's okay, it's gonna be, have some gaps, it's gonna have some spaces. This is your first project after all. Hi, Peanut. <laughs> Been crocheting a long time so I know how tight to pull the yarn. You're learning. It's all good. I specifically designed these that it's okay if there's a little bit of gaps or some mistakes. You're still going to be able to tell what it is at the end and that's awesome. I did my two single crochets so now my decrease and go ahead and do that for the round. Two single crochets and then a decrease. For the next round, it's going to be one single crochet and then a decrease. And you'll do that for the whole round. I'm doing my last decrease of this round, I suppose. Now I have this gap, but we got to stuff it. So I'm going to take out my hook and then put my stitch marker through my loop. Now it won't come undone as we stuff it. I'm gonna zoom us out a little bit. Hi there. Okay, so the trick with stuffing, you don't just wanna like shove this whole thing in. You wanna pull it apart in little clumps and place it. This makes it so you don't have to use as much stuffing and it'll be a fluffier and rounder. And right now, I know it doesn't look like a frog. It kind of looks like Mike Wazowski, and that's okay. It, <laughs> it's gonna look like a frog once we add the eyes. The eyes are where it's at with this. So I'm pulling small clumps. That one's kind of big. <laughs> and I'm placing it in. And if you want yours to be taller, you can shove some more yarn up top or, or rounder. There we go. <laughs> Do it on the sides. Totally up to you. I don't like to stretch my stitches too much, so I really just like putting stuffing where it needs to, to make it look full. So I'm not like overfilling or anything. Maybe it looks like an Easter egg. I, I don't really know. I, it doesn't look like a frog, but he will. Alrighty. Mm. Yeah, I like that. Nice and fluffed. I'm going to take out my stitch marker and add my hook back. I'm not going to put my marker back in because I know for my last round, I just have to do six decreases. If you just saw, I kind of shoved my stuffing down a little bit more just so I have room to work without picking up all the fluff. So I'm going to do six decreases. And these you want to make sure it's nice and tight. These might be a little bit awkward. It's a small space. That's okay. If you can't do all six, that's also okay. If you want to do four or five, we'll just pull it a little bit tighter at the end. Um, I kind of lost track. I think that was three. Four. Five. Yeah, last one. So 
but we still have a gap and we're gonna fix that. So I'm gonna leave, I leave like a foot because I would rather have more yarn than not of the yarn and I'm gonna cut it. And then pull this through, pull my loop. So it's not a loop anymore. I'm gonna find my tapestry needle, which is that plastic needle we have. And we're gonna sew the bottom. I'll admit, it doesn't matter how you do it. Every crochet I've seen, I feel like does it differently. So it's totally up to you. I like going between the stitches and pulling tight, kind of like a cinch bag. Um, but you can also go across if you need to. Sometimes I do both. Kind of just depends. Depends on my feeling. I want to pull it tight and then I'm going to place a knot right at the end. Now we don't just want to cut this yarn off because then our piece could still come undone. What we want to do is called weaving it in. So we're going to poke our needle close to where it's already attached and poke out anywhere else. I want to poke it over here. And now we can cut this because for it to come undone, it'd have to go through this whole piece and then through the knot. And that's just, that's unlikely. I want to cut it and kind of like rub it in so my tail stays nice and hidden. And that's how you do the body. To make our eyes, we're going to start with the magic ring. I want to go a little faster here. Obviously, you guys are still learning, so if you want to go back to the beginning of the video, you can slow it down and watch it there. But I'm going to make our magic ring. Do our chain one. And then do our six single crochets. Thanks, Peanut. Funny enough, I've like played hardcore with her before I started this video. She was panting. She was so exhausted from playing. And yet she still wants my attention and won't just go to sleep. We're starting this the exact same way that we started the bottom. We did a magic ring, chain one, and then six single crochets. So it's literally the exact same thing we did. Four. Five and six and pull tight. We're then going to do the same thing again and we're going to do six increases. So I'm going to put my marker in and then our increases is two single crochets in every stitch. So you're just going to place two single crochets in each stitch so that your six becomes 12. And again, just like the beginning of the video, so if you need to go back and watch that, feel free. For the next two rounds, we're going to place two, one single crochet in every stitch, just like how we did here. So two rounds of one single crochet in every stitch. I find it easier to count to 12 in my head twice versus using a stitch marker, just because it is a small space. So I'm just gonna go one, two, all the way to 12, and then you'll do it again. It should look like this. Now that we have the little eye, we're gonna leave about a foot of yarn. Cut. And then pull through. So we have two eyes, but now we get to do the super fun part of actually adding the safety eye. I'm using 10 millimeters and I'm just going to stick it in. And then we have to put the back on. You just push. If it's not working for you, you can turn it backwards. Just like that. I'm currently working on upgrading my safety eyes and I'm so excited. So I'm going to put those in and then the backs. 
And then we have two little eyes that we need to sew on. This is the middle tail. I'm gonna trim it. Not too close, you don't want it to come undone, but just a little bit. So we have some, we don't have to worry about it getting stuck anywhere. I'm gonna put the big tail on the stitch, on the tapestry needle. This is my bottom, this is my top, nice pretty one. And I like it right there. If you have straight pins, you can use it to kind of hold it in place, but I just like to use my hands personally. There's a hundred different ways to sew on pieces in crochet. I'm here to tell you, it doesn't really matter as long as it stays on. So I'm going around into the body and then into the eye. This is actually called a whip stitch. I'm gonna go three quarters of the way around and the wet where I'll add just a little bit of stuffing, just so it doesn't look all squished like that. So I'm gonna go around. It's nice that we're sewing green on green right now, so it's not really gonna show. When we sew the belly on, you have to be a little bit more mindful if you don't want it to show. Sometimes I like it showing. But for the eyes, it doesn't matter because it's all the same color. Almost all the way around, I'm gonna take literally just the smallest amount of stuffing and push it in there and then finish sewing. You could stuff it a little bit more if you want. I don't like to overstuff small parts like this because I hate it sticking out when I sew it, but that's honestly just a personal preference. Okay, I'm all the way around. We gotta hide our tails again. So I wanna stick it in, stick it out somewhere else and then trim. You're gonna do the same thing with the second eye. <laughs> Let's add the smile while we're here too. I have my piece of black yarn and I went back and forth. Should it be a small smile or a big smile? I'm gonna leave it up to you. You do what you want. It's your crochet piece. I wanna start from the side and you're gonna poke into one corner or one arch of the smile. You're gonna to wanna to leave a little bit in the back just so it doesn't come undone. And you're gonna make one huge straight line or, or a small one if you want. And I'm gonna poke out the bottom. It, if that did not make any sense, it will once you see it. So straight line and then I'm gonna poke through the bottom, like the bottom arch, like the smile, you're gonna to go to the bottom of the U. And then I'm gonna scoop it down like that. So I'm kind of like pinning it in this place. I'm gonna poke it out where I originally started it. And then I'm kind of rubbing it. So it's just so it's not so V, it's more of a U. We have a little smile. Over here, you can either tie these together and then shove it in, which is preferred. I left my tail a little bit too short in the beginning. So I'm just gonna shove it inside and kind of rub it. Now we have our smile, but he needs a belly. For our belly, we're gonna start the same way we did the body. We're going to do a magic ring with six single crochets. Magic ring, our chain one, and then six single crochets. And again, go back to the beginning of the video if I'm going too fast for you. Three, four, five, and six. I'm gonna tighten it. You're going to do the next round of six increases. I'm gonna count in my head because it's a small space and I don't want my stitch marker in quite yet. So two stitches in each one. So our six becomes 12. 
Next row, we're going to one single crochet and then an increase. One, and then an increase. To make our circle just a little bit more round, because it's as big as we're gonna make it, we're going to do one slip stitch in the next one, in the next stitch. So insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through again. And that just makes our circle a little rounder. When we leave a nice long tail, cut, pull through. I'm gonna trim the back again so it's not in our way. And then put our tail in our tapestry needle to sew onto the body. He still missed an eye, I haven't gotten there yet. But I'm gonna hold the belly in place. I'm gonna sew it a little differently here just so it doesn't show up on my like sewing yarn, doesn't show up on the body. So I'm gonna go from the body to the belly. And then from the belly to the body. And then back through the belly. Belly to body, up to the belly. I finished sewing, so I'm gonna stick my white yarn and poke out on the bottom side of the frog. This matters a little bit more because it's a different color. We're gonna cut it and then shove it back into the body. If he had another eye, he'd look just like a frog, right? <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me today to make the beginner frog. I hope you had a great time making it. If I went too fast at all, please remember you can slow down the video on YouTube, a little like gear settings, you can slow it down. You can also rewind, watch it again, do what you need to. If you're following from a crochet kit, it comes with a full PDF pattern. Um, on that link that I, you got with the password, scroll down below the video, you'll see a big PDF. It has lots of pictures in it, step-by-step -step of things like the magic ring. So if you're kind of struggling, go ahead and check that out and don't forget to reach out to me too. I'd love to help you figure it out. If you like this video tutorial, please like and subscribe. It helps me grow the channel so I can keep on making more video tutorials for you guys. Again, my name is Kendall, and I will see you in the next video.